Hello guys, don't mind the messy room in the back. We are just cleaning up here a little bit. What we're going to be doing is doing my remnant from the Ashes review. Let's talk about off of the gameplay. The gameplay is pretty solid wise, in my opinion. It's based on your gear level and progressively going back and forward in a balanced step setting. What that means is, guys, is if you can't upgrade too far, right? You can upgrade a level or two with your weapons, right? Ahead of your other gear, but any further than that, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're actually gonna suffer. So it ha you have to progress in a balanced way. So balance, it's it's a way to keep the game balanced. It's balanced scaling. This game is more of a randomized type of game, which I didn't like, but I didn't like it. So it deals with rent each time you each time you randomize a world or something, you're not gonna get the same dungeon. Like Earth, Earth has the most amount of dungeons. Or most amount of accessible areas where you can access or get other items and stuff like that because it is a randomized playthrough each time you play but if you do the campaign there are certain things you will unlock versus the adventure mode like um like the aslan or stuff like that or go and find the queen like there's a certain amount of stuff you will always unlock and stuff of that nature i find this very annoying because you can't 100 percent well it's this this game can you 100 percent it campaign wise no and no you can't and um you can you can't 100 percent in one playthrough which is pretty annoying also but that means you can 100 percent all the quests in one playthrough which is annoying there are hidden weapons like the best weapon in the game is the beam rifle beam rifle outshines every other weapon i played it as a casual it outshines every other weapon. Like the cure, one of the things that you can miss, you can get the in a campaign, you get the cure card, but you, you can't unlock it because you uh, it doesn't it doesn't spawn. There are some like the hidden mechan hidden secrets like the bell puzzle and stuff like like a hidden um armor like the best armor I, I have I have it currently equipped. It. I forgot what it's called. It's like a scaly armor. There are boss weapons. Boss weapons count as the one level boss weapon count as two levels, but be careful. Uh, because if you're aiming for materials, because you can be landing, sitting at level 14, and you need level 15 to get the best material in the game to upgrade. So, be careful of that. One, a huge problem with the game is the bosses. Like, so many minions, bro. It's a minion out of a zoo. Like, every boss you fight, minions fight. You just don't fight the boss by yourself. Why? 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 Every single boss is a minion hell. The first boss, the Gorfis, I thought, was a minion hell. It just pissed me off. And a small area, and the boss spawned instantly near you. The minions spawn instantly near you, and they don't spawn far away. It's like, what is going on here? Am I being trolled or something? Like, it's, what is going on? The game's strongest suit is the gameplay loop. The gameplay loop is really strong for this game. If you're like a good gameplay loop, you care about metas and games, and try, trying to min-max, because it has an amazing amount, of, it has a good amount of talent tree, you unlock it in, in hidden and secret ways, you have to keep replaying it. If you if you want that type of gameplay loop, this game is perfect for you. But um, if you're just, uh, if you just want another game, just to play through, it has co-op, you can play with your friends, I think two to four people. You can play with two to four people. I forget forget the karma. It's good for that. You you can have a good time with your friends. But it's not one of those games where it's strong suit it's it's a gameplay. And that's pretty good. Let's talk about the story. The story is I would say mostly non existent. I can summarize it, I'm gonna explain it, but it's not in depth at all. It's a apocalyptic zombie type of game where there's worms and um, type like type of that. There's a couple of notes around, but that's you only find them in the beginning of the game, or when you talk to certain characters, certain amount of NPCs. But they give you background dialogue, but it's nothing to tell the story. The story can basically some you write this, you write a book to this island trying to find a tower to destroy it. Because previous people who came here disappeared. You would teleport, and then you go go to Earth. You find the mother, then you 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 keep going. You try you're trying to find the founder. You keep going trying to find the founder. You go to you go you teleport to a desert area. You go to Eslan. Eslan requires um an object. Eslan requires an object. You can get the object by killing Eslan or uh, giving him the object. You get the key. You to go back to the labyrinth. The labyrinth occurred after Earth. Go back to the labyrinth, you open the key to the labyrinth, 
you go through that world, the Isha world, you find the founder, you go, you go back to the town and uh, you kill the dreamer. One thing about why the dreamer appeared because Earth is a core world. It shouldn't have, none of the worms should have been able to enter. But you find out the dreamers opened opened the created new doors for the worm type entity to come in, and, and that's why uh, that's why Earth is in, a, is in an apocalyptic, apocalyptic setting. From what I, I understand, it's basically non-existent. It's meh at best, and you find it from reading the lore notes. But I guess at the start of the game. Don't worry about it. It's, the story is not a it's not a strong support this game. It's like the problem with this it you can't just piecemeal the story at the beginning of the game and mostly at the end. It does not work like that. A 1.0 in my opinion. It's like it doesn't. There's no environmental storytelling. There's no there's no way to explain what's going on in the world. You just jump from point A to point B. You, it's just like. Like, it feels like a 1.0 type of story. Like, it's the beginning of a great story. But it's not a story-based game. Hopefully, uh, when I play Remnant 2, that changes. 1.0 for the story. Let's talk about the performance. The performance is mostly about I crashed near the end of my playthrough. And that's something weird. When I played the campaign, I kept crashing more and more. Like, the further I got along with the game, I kept crashing more and more. Like, and slowing down, and slows down loading. But that usually happened when I'm like 80 to 90% of the game or got the platinum. So for most people, once you put in 30 to 40 hours, you're going to start crashing a little bit more from probably the data, the saves being loaded. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, 2.0. Because most people are going to put around 20 to 30 hours in the game. Rarely you're going to find someone to um, put 40 or 50 or 100 hours. You're going to be probably play it for a playthrough or two. You're, you're not going to net over 20 hours. So... I give it a 2.0. Yeah, that feels that feels correct. A 2.0. Let's talk about the price point. Remnant from the X has an MSRP price point of $39.99. I honestly thought it was $60. I thought I honestly thought it was released at $60 because how most studios I thought this game was $60 at once. That's why I really thought. I think this game fits around the 30 to 35 price tag. You're looking for a new game to put your time, your hours, if you care about the gameplay look. It just feels that level of quality. It feels it's good enough for a $30 to $35 game. 40 is pushing it, and it's for, worth $40. It doesn't feel like a fully priced game. They didn't price it at that. They priced it at, at a $40, $40 price game. And it feels worth it at the $30 to $35 price range. Which which is amazing for what they for the, what they delivered. 2.0 is the score. Let's finish off with the summary. Run from the ashes. Feels like a very, very, very good attempt. Good attempt. Good attempt. Good attempt. Attempt. Uh, 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 as a new game yes it is an average game but has a very good attempt and a very good foundation for the next game they fulfilled very good on the gameplay loop. their gameplay loop is solid it, ha it can it has a little bit more work with minions uh, uh with too many minions with the boss every boss has a minion that's a major issue at bit because you're looping them thro through so much and there's too many bosses that have too that have minions or a second phase where the second phase or minions should be selectively employed with specific bosses every single boss should not have minions that's that's cringe that's annoying you're just going to be annoyed with it it's just wasting time I'm excited for Remnant 2 because the game, I know, if I know the gameplay loop is going to be solid. If I know the gameplay loop is going to be solid, that means I'm excited for what changes they're going to be adding to the story. What, what, how are they going to make it better? I haven't played Remnant 2. I'm waiting. Hopefully they blow it out of the park. From, from what I'm seeing and how it was recently uh, a nomination in the Game on the game Awards, I'm pretty sure they blew it out of the park. If you, you can be nominated, that means they did a good job. And Remnant from the Ashes and its currency deserves a 7 out of 10. Feels like a 7 out of 10 game. And it does. Art, art style and music music design feels good and adequate, but nothing amazing. If it was amazing, I would I would have given a bonus score of 1. That's how I feel. If if, if I'm really digging your art style, I'm giving you a 0.5 bonus. If I'm really digging your music music design, I'm giving you a 0.5. This game is the average. They did a good job for the, for a $40 price game. It's not, it's not rated at 60. It's $40. On that note, it's an M from all.